Greetings, people and other species of the internet. Today, with the PT Cruiser, funny looking dumbbells and clutch fluid. <laughs> Last time we saw the PT Cruiser, we had just replaced the clutch and I had forgotten to bleed the clutch fluid and also, well, honestly, it just needs changed because, whew, that is not a healthy color. Also, the factory motor mounts, uh, these sort of dog bone mounts here are kind of junk and that's something that everyone says you need to get the poly ones on these turbo cars. Even if you're leaving it stock, get the poly ones, they're just as comfy as stock. So. Fortunately, viewer Andrew, thanks a lot, up in Minnesota, sent me these. These are some polyurethane replacements, and they were um, they were a bit Minnesotaed up, a little bit of surface rust, so I brushed them off the wire wheel, gave them a little bit of this very tasteful, what I thought was a gray metallic, but is actually more of like a brown metallic paint. Whatever, you won't see much of them. And uh, yeah, we're gonna throw those in today. Should be fairly straightforward, except you actually have to do some weird calibration thing with this one up here to make sure that the engine is sitting just right. I've got to consult my service manual, but first we need to get these out of here. And uh, for that, we're going to use the quick jacks because there's one here and then there's one there. So that wheel's gonna have to come off. Perfect. So I'm just gonna mop out this gross fluid first using a uh, totally clean rag because I don't want all that junk traveling through my master cylinder if it can be avoided. So we're just gonna swish that around. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Might take a few rounds of that. So for bleeding the clutch fluid, technically, they want you to have a special tool that actually pressurizes the fluid up from the bottom through to the top. But they said that if you don't have that tool, you can do it the same as your brakes. So we're gonna have Davin in the car pushing the clutch fluid, and I'm just gonna dribble fluid all over myself. Um, I think they exp expressly said not to use a vacuum bleeder, which is Kind of depressing because I really do like my vacuum bleeder, but I'm going to use the reservoir and the line just to try and keep from getting this crap all over myself. So let's see how that goes. So the fun part is, once you're done bleeding, the service manual says to pump the clutch 50 times. I have no idea what this is supposed to do. Yep, that feels like a clutch. Ow, my leg. The first step is taking off this under tray, which is just done with a trim removal tool like that one, and then a 10 millimeter on extension for two bolts, which are way up there. And that gets you this lovely view of the old lower dog bone mount. And then what's called the uh, pencil strut, which will also have to come off, looks like. 14, 14, and probably 17, I guess. And then there's another bolt in behind the pencil strut there that'll also have to come off. So once we do that, interesting little mark there. Not what sure that's not sure what that's for. Not sure how to word correctly either. I can't brain today. Uh, so let's take that off, and then that one is going to be replaced by the larger of our two mounts which have freaking disappeared. Oh, there they are. <laughs> yeah, so the large one there is the bottom and then the top. So let's get that. I was wrong. It's a 15. Oh, it's a bolt, not a nut. Okay. It's an 18 and a 21. It's not too bad. Nice rust-free car. I'm impatient. I require results immediately. Yeah, look at that, results. Gotta love it. Okay, so then this thing. Yeah. How it comes. Interestingly, this, uh, this bottom one 
Doesn't seem to be in awfully terrible shape, but this one's in better shape. So let's see here. That'll go like, yep, okay. So yeah, just the side that protrudes goes in. And there you have it. I mean, obviously you'll wanna put some bolts in there. <laughs> Um, and I'm not going to torque any of this down until we get the top one done. I think I need to consult the uh, service manual to figure out what order this happens in. Oh. There we go. That part is not on YouTube. <laughs> hey, we got there eventually. Okay, those are both started. Move on to the top now. Up here at the top, looks like we've got a couple of 15s to take out. Wrong way. Okay, those are tight. <laughs> I'm gonna use an actual ratchet handle for that. Don't wanna break my Milwaukee, they're expensive. joy it is working on a car that's not all rusty and gross. This hole here is slotted and there's a bit of an adjustment here and we'll have to check this adjustment against the spec when we put all this back together. You actually have to put a jack under the front of the engine and tilt it front or back to make sure that that is correct. In the meantime, I just need to get that out of there. I think it's kind of welded itself with rust. The answer was more wiggling. So it comes out attached to a bracket. Just put an 18 in the impact and off it comes. This looks like it's been replaced recently. The rubber's all in pretty good shape, which has me doubting if this was actually our issue. Um, yeah, it looks like this will go back on like this. Sure, this is about ready to go back in. Loosely, of course. Oh good, more wiggling. So according to the shop manual, at this point, you tighten down every bolt on the mounts except for the rear one here and the rear one on the bottom. And then I've got the jack positioned underneath the front of the transmission to kind of control the tilt. And now I need to get that hole and the center of that bolt to be about 119 millimeters, which is and I, I have to be, <laughs> I can't exactly be super precise here. Looks like I'm almost there. Let's just give this a little touch of up. The center points are now right on the money. So now I can go ahead and torque this guy down. <clears throat> there we go. And that one was already tightened down. At this stage, it is pretty simple reassembly. The pencil strut goes back on. So, and where on earth did the splash shield go? Goes like this and requires a good amount of finagling. Christmas tree up in here. So now all that's left is to stick the wheel back on and go for a test drive. Hopefully this fixes the problem of us grinding gears because the clutch wasn't disengaging all the way and hopefully it helps me with the engine vibration. Though I'm not entirely convinced because the mounts that came out looked fine, honestly, and the adjustment didn't really change much. I'm concerned here with how close the timing cover is to this bracket. It's not supposed to be like that in any pictures that I've seen. But the only other thing that would cause that is the mid mount over here, which doesn't really look bad, but with how bad the trans mount is, maybe it is just hosed. So 
who knows. As you can imagine, a huge pain since it's down right there in the middle of absolutely everything. You have to take off this upper mount, take off the timing cover. You pretty much do a timing belt job, so I'll probably do that and a timing belt and water pump all at the same time. But that's round of maintenance for another day. Let's just see how this went and hope that I fixed something. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We will know immediately if the uh, motor mounts worked or not. The answer is no, they did not. So this needs a mid-mount. Wonderful. Well, here's hoping the clutch works. It still engages at the same point. So I'm not terribly optimistic there either. <laughs> oh my gosh. The vibrations might actually be worse. Oh, it did shift right though. Takes off nice. Oh yeah. Oh, the shifting is so much improved. Oh, that's nice. At least it still makes boosty noises. It's just also uh, incredibly, incredibly shaky in here. <sighs> well, more content opportunities, I guess. Thanks for watching. Hello, it's Jake from a few days later when I was editing this video. Turns out I did this a bit wrong. Since I got these used, I never really looked at the official materials from the manufacturer. It turns out I installed these a bit wrong. This one is from the top, and I saw the witness marks from it being installed like this, but it turns out that is wrong. What you're actually supposed to do is take this bracket, flip it around, then reattach it and reinstall. And also, you're gonna want washers that go over here like this. I got these big old fender washers and I'm using two of them because I couldn't find, you know, a thick washer. And uh, you're gonna wanna do the same thing on the bottom as well. This kit from, I think this is a uh, AGP? I don't know, I don't remember the brand name, but uh, the kit comes with washers when you actually buy it new. Um, but I didn't do that. And I actually remember now, the uh, guy who sent this to me told me about the washer thing. So, uh, yep, that's my bad. So we're just gonna, there we go. So now there's the smooth side facing the bushing and there are washers to keep it from pulling through. Now, this isn't gonna help with my vibration, I don't think. I'm pretty sure that's just the mid-mount, but we can go ahead and reinstall this. And I've got another washer here to go on the bottom. Uh, same location in the front, um, just a smaller bushing, so I got a smaller washer, oops, and a thicker one at that. So we'll put these on and put this all back together and uh, see how that do, I guess. There we go, that's everything back together. We got our washers in place. This bracket flipped around. I'd show you the bottom, but uh, well, I can't. The car's back on the ground. Okay, so let's uh, give this thing a bit of a jump. It is quite dead. Okay, I wonder if we'll see any change in vibration amount. I kind of doubt it, but. Yeah, not really. Oh, uh, one other thing that I did, if I turn my lights on here, uh, I didn't even notice this until I saw it in my own video. <laughs> they didn't put red lights in these clear tail light housings, so I got some Sylvania LEDs. Uh, yeah, they're fine. They're not quite as bright as incandescents due to the way that LEDs are. Technology Connections actually has an excellent video on that uh, subject, but yep. They work, and my mount should be quite a bit happier now. Thanks for watching.